Stackware is an AI-based API that helps you build security applications in minutes. Today, I'm excited because we're going to talk about secure coding. We talk about this on Fridays. It's important for developers to find seamless and efficient ways to include security in your development processes. And so today we are giving you another free session on how you can improve your, your environment. Today, we're going to talk about how to uh, build in your Node.js code security code scans that's going to test your uh, project modules and dependencies using the OWASP uh, dependency checker and the OWASP. What is OWASP? It is a developer's best friend. Um, it stands for the Open Web Security Web Application Security Project. It's an open source project where they provide tools, um, how tos on how to build a secure application. So we're going to use this tool and um, and walk you through how to scan your Node.js code. And why does it matter? So why does it matter if uh, an engineer builds secure code? Uh, we want to make it hard for, for bad actors. You know, there's different levels of security and they often try to find, you know, the path to least resistance. And so oftentimes they target people through phishing attacks. They target you as a developer by exposing uh, vulnerabilities in your code. And, you know, they typically the easiest way for them to get in is by finding a a, a vulnerability in a dependent package. And then once they find that vulnerability in that dependent package, all they have to do now is just go test all of these different applications because they know that there's a high probability that these developers are building with it. And now they have found a way in into your your environment. And so you sort of want to think of this as a supply supply chain chat uh, attack. And so they are getting in through this this hole through another source. And so the way that you protect yourself and your company from a breach is by scanning your code, finding these vulnerabilities. And so we're going to show you how to do this today. In the environment, um, so in the, it, so we release with all of our all of our tech talks that we're doing today, we always want to leave you with something where you can go back and read. And so Wilson in the chat is putting a link to our blog where we are giving you the how to tutorial of of what is OWASP, you know, how to install the dependency checker into your environment. And so I'm going to walk you through how to do this today, but you can also check out the blog on resources.hackword.com to get the instructions on how to set this up in your environment. And so, you know, here we show you how to set it up using the, uh, the, using it on a, uh, Ubuntu, um, OS or how to set it up on a Mac environment. And so I'm running a Mac environment and we use brew to do, to do the install. And, um, it's just a simple brew update first, and then you install the dependency check and it's really seamless. I didn't have any problems. And, um, once it was installed, I was able to start scanning my code. And, um, so I'm going to walk you through how an example we we use for our example um, our API. So you know our API allows you to make calls and get information on uh, a user's risk to a social engineering attack, or you know creating seamless phishing simulations that are data driven. And we also give you the ability to create powerful training solutions with our API. And, and here is an example of an API. We're using the dependency, um, an Axios dependency. And this is just a way to uh, make requests to a source 
get the response and then further process it in Node.js. And, um, and so you can see like in our hello world project, we have the code that I just showed you. We have our node modules. When you click on those node modules, you see that it has downloaded two modules, Axios and follow redirects. Now, when I run the dependency checker on this code, let me pull it up for you. So when I run the dependency checker, and let's see, if I made it easy on myself. Oh, so I'm going to I've already ran the steps of changing the directory into that folder. We're using version 6.2. Um, and that's the latest version that actually came out at the end of May. So it's a new version that was just recently released. And just to give you a little bit of feedback of what I'm actually about to do when I run this, this dash out is saying, OK, tell me where you want the output to go. And it outputs a report file that I'm going to show you in a second. And then this dash dash scan is telling the checker, OK, what do I actually want you to scan? So since I'm actually I want everything to be scanned in the directory that I'm in and I want my output to go into that directory, I just um, use the dot to tell it stay where we are. Now, I haven't set up the fully qualified. Um, I haven't set this up as a global variable, so bear with me while I while I um, think that's it. Let's see if I was if I was smart enough to set the. Oh, I need to go into this directory. One second. So I don't have to type this again. Oh, there it is. OK, so let me change to the Hello World directory and get some help. Well, I thought I had help. All right. All right, we're just going to have to do it this way. So user, I think it's local. What else do we have? Homebrew. And I bet you I can find it over here faster. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we're able to scan and what it's doing is it you have to be connected to the internet because what this is doing is actually connecting to the CVE repository. And this is a repository that all cybersecurity um, vulnerabilities are reported to, and they're usually reported to by cybersecurity um, analysts or even developers. But this is where all of the cybersecurity uh, vulnerabilities are reported. And so this connects into that source and it's trying to identify CVEs that have been found that matches those, um, those modules. What I want to show you in this example is an example of success of so when your code is clean and it doesn't have any vulnerabilities. And so here you can see it, do, it does these various analyzing. Um, so it uses the Node.js package analyzer um, and it analyzed in two seconds. And then it gives me this report and I'm going to show you it. but. What's, what is more fun is when I can show you actual problems and actual vulnerabilities. But I want to show you the happy path of, of what is working. 
Uh, and so here you have this great report. It's easy to read. It shows you all of the dependencies it scanned, which is 38 in this case, and it found zero vulnerabilities. Now I have another project that um, I, I have downloaded that I know has vulnerabilities, and I'm just going to show you the scan here in this screen and just show you the difference between one that has zero vulnerabilities and one that has many. And this one may take a little bit longer because it's a bigger project. It has more dependencies. You're going to see the Node.js analyzer, and then you're going to see that it's going to start popping up the CVEs, which are the vulnerabilities that it found in this repository. Um, and I'm going to show you, you know, what does that look like? And it tells you the version of the vulnerability of the the package that is a problem okay and so it is creating the report and I'm going to for the sake of the security for this or for this repository I'm going to show you the sample dependency check of what it looks like and we're going to walk you through what does this mean and so as you saw the scanning is seamless and in our um, blog we talk about how you could potentially automate this by using ant um, if you're using a, um, a, a ant based environment or if you want to use Jenkins you can do a continuous integration setup where your code is continuously being checked, your dependencies are continuously getting checked for vulnerabilities. Um, so for here, what we've see, what we see here is that it scanned 306 uh, dependencies. It found 36 dependencies that were vulnerable. Now the interesting thing about it is they classify these based on severity. So you have the high, medium, lows, um, another great thing is when you click on these, you're able to get details about why is this vulnerable and it's details from the organizations or the users that have, um, reported this. They're telling you what is actually vulnerable about this code. And so you can read, you know, the details and sometimes it'll tell you about the impact that it's had. It may say that, you know, this, uh, this breach, it's a severe breach and it caused X, Y, Z to, to happen. And another great thing, like if you're thinking about why should I, when is it right to actually start acting and upgrading and modifying our environment for security purposes? Look at this CVS uh, score, uh, CVSS score. And basically it is a score where, you know, they rate the severity of this breach. And so if you see high, um, high severity and you see, you know, a CVSS score probably at around you know, an eight or a nine, then this is something that you want to prioritize as, you know, getting done immediately. And there's many, you know, ways that your, your organization can approach it where they want to probably have zero vulnerabilities. And that is, you know, optimal and great. But I know in a real world environment, you know, engineers and um, organizations are moving fast. And so they have to sort of set priorities on when they can tackle certain things. And um, I recommend looking at the severity score and the CVSS, uh, the severity rating in the CVSS score. The other cool thing about this is um, what I recommend, the, the number one way that I recommend patching these vulnerabilities, sometimes they'll give you details on how to rec rectify the, the vulnerability if there isn't a new version out. But the way that you should approach, you know, if it's time, then go ahead and upgrade to the next version. And so it'll tell you, you know, which versions are problematic. Let's see if I can find it for this one. Let's see. Sometimes it'll tell you 
what version is it'll say all versions under this are the problematic version so that means you need to upgrade to if this is version 4 upgrade to version 5 and or above to to make sure that you get the patch all right and let's see is there anything else that I'm mi missing and again when you go to the blog you'll see everything that I've talked about today and uh, in detail and you just go to resources at hackware.com and you'll see this blog it's titled the same as this stream it's titled how to scan your node.js code for cybersecurity issues using the OWASP dependency check awesome well this is another episode of um, secure coding and at Hackware, we are happy to support your, your secure coding needs. And if you are a developer and you have requirements to build a cybersecurity ad application, build with the Hackware API. You go to hackware.com slash dev and you'll get access to the API in minutes. And if you want to rewatch our videos, you can watch them here on Twitch as well as you can watch them on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you'll find our Hackware page and you will see our videos there. Thank you so much. We'll see you um, in a few weeks for the next Secure Coding video. And uh, I hope you stay vigilant. Thank you for your time.